if you're looking for a really great vegan meat substitute, you're in the right place. Hi there, I'm Dina, and I like taking my favorite comfort meals and turning them into healthier vegan and plant-based versions that can fuel my active lifestyle, are satisfying and delicious, and quick to get to the table. <laughs> so today, don't miss it. I'm sharing my favorite seitan recipe with you. This one comes together quick, is easy, versatile, and it's so delicious. It's so good. Now, if you're not a fan of seitan, don't worry. This tastes nothing like the ones you buy in the store. Nothing like those seitan roasts and meat replacements. This is actually good, and there's a few swaps and a few things we do to get it just the right texture. So, let's get started. I'm going to show you what I have. This is going to be kind of a short video. I'm just going to show you how to make this, and I'm making enough for dinner tonight and a meal prep and put in the freezer because it freezes really well. So I just have some Vital Wheat Gluten. I like this brand. I'm not affiliated, but I'll put a link in the description where you can get this. It's just a really good um, Vital Wheat Gluten brand. It always works out great for me, and that's what I have in the jar here. So I have my Vital Wheat Gluten, I have some miso paste, I have some vegetarian veggie stock. It's a vegetarian chicken stock flavor. So that's what we're using today, but you can use any kind of stock or bouillon powder. I have some homemade onion powder. I have some of my favorite mushroom powder to give it that umami, really good stuff. I have some nutritional yeast, some sage, and some rosemary and black pepper and some chickpeas that have already been cooked. Now, I cook these from dry, but you can certainly use canned. Just drain the water and rinse them. So, let's get started. Let me show you how quick and easy this is. It is so quick and easy. And I'm just going to start, and I will put all of the measurements in the description box, but into my large bowl, I'm putting two cups of the Vital Wheat Gluten. If I can get it out there, if I can get it out right. It's time to fill up my container. So two cups. And these turn out so good every time. You can season them any kind of way you like. Um, I have also done this before putting a little soy sauce and Vegemite and a little vegan Worcestershire to make it more like a meatball, which is also really delicious and really good with barbecue sauce. But this is more like kind of a chicken nugget or a chicken meat replacement with these flavors we have going on today. So I have my two cups of cooked chickpeas. And there's a little bit of the water from the bowl of chickpeas in there. That's okay. This is going to be our wet ingredients and our spices that we're going to just put into a blender and blend those up. So my chickpeas, my miso paste, that's one tablespoon of miso, my nutritional yeast, black pepper, sage, and rosemary and my bouillon powder and mushroom powder. And to this, just to get it to blend up, I'm going to add about a cup of just room temperature water. Now with this seitan recipe, there is no need to package it up and boil it. Some recipes call for that, like if you're making a roast or sausages or something. We're just making nuggets, so we don't have to worry about any of that. We're just going to mix it together tear it up into nuggets, bake it in the oven, or pop it in the freezer if you're meal prepping it, and dinner will be on the table in less than 30 minutes. All right, so all blended up and smelling really good. <laughs> so I'm just going to add our wet ingredients that we have blended up, our chickpeas and water and spices and nutritional yeast, to our vital wheat gluten. And we just want to give this a stir. Again, this is a quick, easy recipe, so 
you don't really even need to knead this like a lot of vital wheat gluten recipes call for or seitan recipes call for you to knead it we don't need to do that we just need to make sure it's mixed nice and thoroughly and I just need to add a couple tablespoons uh, more water because it's looking a little dry. When you're using the vital wheat gluten, it's just like using flour. The amount of water that you need or liquid that you need will depend on a couple things. Um, how wet your chickpeas are, uh, how humid the day is. So it'll vary by just a little bit. But I think a couple tablespoons more has us going in the right direction. And you just want it to form like a pliable dough that's not too loose and not too sticky. So, just a little bit more water. I'm gonna pull my sleeves up there and I'm just going to finish mixing it by hand. That's the best way that I have found. Um, if you'd like to, you can put some gloves on for this part. And you just want it to just kind of all come together and stop sticking to the side of the bowl. So the only thing left to do is just tear it into bite-sized pieces. You can make big chicken nuggets or small chicken nuggets. Um, just make them any kind of shape you like. I just kind of tear them apart. You can roll it into balls. I just kind of tear it apart and lay it on my cookie tray that I have lined with parchment paper. Now, like I said, I am cooking some of this tonight just for myself, so I'm just going to put a few pieces on here for tonight's meal, and the rest of it I'm going to line on a cookie tray just like this one. I'm not going to line it with, with parchment paper because I'm going to just stick it in the freezer, and this won't stick. It won't stick at all, so I just like to use the parchment paper because it's easy cleanup. You could also just pop a few of these in the air fryer, which I like to do from frozen. So what I'll do with the rest that I'm not eating tonight is I'll go ahead and just put those on a cookie tray also. I'm going to pop them into the freezer so that they freeze separately, and then I'll put them in a storage container so they don't stick together and put them in the freezer. Now when you get them out of the freezer, you can cook them straight from frozen right in the air fryer five to seven minutes and they turn out really good. So one thing I want to say for chicken nuggets, at this point while they're still moist before you bake them, if you would like to, you can roll these in breadcrumbs or cornmeal for a crunchier texture and that's also really good, but I'm not doing that tonight. I like it just like this and tonight I'm going to show you a really delicious takeout style sauce that I love to have with these chicken nuggets. All right, let me show you what I'm going to put together real quick for an easy Asian style takeout sauce. This is going to be a sweet and spicy sauce. Now, this is by no means any kind of traditional sauce. Uh, I would not call it a General So's. I would not call it a teriyaki. It's just a sweet and spicy Asian style sauce. So I have a little bit of poison which is sweet and salty. I'm also going to put in, that was about two tablespoons. I'm also going to put in about two tablespoons of this homemade cayenne hot sauce, which is hot and vinegary. So when you add this to the heat, if you're adding hot sauce, stand back and don't breathe that in. <laughs> don't, bring that, don't breathe that steam in, it's dangerous. All right, a little bit of that. And I have this sweet and spicy Korean barbecue flavored barbecue sauce. This brand is great. I get this at Costco. Um, they have different flavors. The original is awesome too. But this is the sweet and spicy version. So this is going to be quite a spicy sauce. You see which way that opens. There we go and about mm, two tablespoons of that also. And I'm going to go in with just a couple drops, about a half a teaspoon 
of toasted sesame oil, which is a really strong flavor, so you don't need a lot of it. Just use a little bitty, tiny bit at a time. <laughs> and I'm also going to go in with a little bit of maple syrup, about a tablespoon, because the other barbecue sauces that we already had in there are already sweet. So I'm just going to stir this up, and because we use the hoisin, it's going to thicken up on its own with the hoisin and the maple syrup. Now, if you don't want to use maple syrup, you can use agave, or you can use brown sugar, or any kind of sweetener substitute that you like. I'm just going to heat this through just a little bit, and I'm going to taste it and see if I want to add anything else to it. It's spicy. Hmm. No. It doesn't need anything. It's sweet, spicy, and salty. And it has a little bit of that umami from the hoisin. It's going to be perfect. Perfect sauce for our little chicken nuggets that are about to come out of the oven. So I'm just going to turn this down low heat because it's ready and we don't want to boil it away. Okay, I have my nice fluffy white rice here, and I'm just going to top it with this delicious looking seitan. Let's try this. It really smells good. And like I said, you can do this, you can make this with any kind of a sauce, um, these seitan nuggets would go great with the rich mushroom gravy. They would grow, go great with a barbecue sauce in a wrap, uh, maybe a buffalo sauce. They're also great um, with honey mustard, which I have a short, I believe, where I have a recipe for a vegan honey mustard that is absolutely delicious. Okay, let's taste it. I think it's cool enough. Mmm. That is so good. That really hits the spot if you are craving takeout. <clears throat> this one's really spicy. Um, in place of the hot sauce, you could also use like a chili flake or chili paste. Goju Jang would be really good. But I'm going to go sit down and enjoy this. I hope you will check this out. This is such an easy recipe, and it's a great vegan or plant-based protein alternative to have in your meal prep rotation. I really appreciate you guys watching. As always, give me a like and a subscribe if you like the content. Let me know what you think of the recipe, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.